Well, I'm glad you clicked on this video, and I hope that you already watched part one of the Wrestling in 2023 Q&A video. If you didn't, make sure you watch that one after you watch this one, after you watch this one. It's not necessary to have to watch the first one first. Watch this one, then watch the other one on the channel. All right, very good. Now, lots of questions here to get through. Um, this one will have a more WWE-centric theme where part one was more AEW. Let's go ahead and get started. At George18477530, ask Andrew Tate versus The Miz for WrestleMania. Seriously, George. What is it about the beta cuck male Andrew Tate that you like? I, I don't understand why Andrew Tate is a thing. I don't understand why anybody would think he's cool. I mean, he legitimately emits oozes small dick insecure energy so as far as that no that would be dumb there's better things you can do with the miz i promise you at she ahmed um will <laughs> fuck Dolph ziggler leave the wwe in 2023 i god we could only hope so but he's got this ability like a cockroach to survive and linger and you know you wonder sometimes if this is like office space where it's like milton it's a freaking glitch nobody realized that he got fired two three years ago and he keeps receiving a paycheck so he keeps showing up to work and nobody's smart enough to realize the air to fix the glitch hopefully the glitch gets fixed in 2023 because it will always be <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler at the real McCoy XXX Why are all these geeks bitching about Charlotte Flair winning the SmackDown Women's Championship when she's clearly the top female? Because she is boring as shit because she is the most overforced piece of talent crap since Randall Keith Orton That's basically who the hell she is too the female version of Randy Orton. The only intriguing thing about Charlotte Flair is every time she goes away for a few months and she comes back, oh, she's got a new look. Gee, I wonder how much that plastic surgery cost her ass. Her promos stink. Her matches are full of botches. Her moonsault looks like shit every single time. She has no discernible personality, no charisma, and oh, great look. They're going to try and force her as a babyface yet again like that ever fucking works. But with all that said, I'll give you this, Dereal McCoy. Charlotte Flair sucks, and it's still so much better than the alternative of having Ronda Rousey continue to be their champion. There you go. At Rick Styles, 1985. If Mandy Rose doesn't come back to WWE, will she eventually transition into hardcore pornography? Uh, note to everyone, Rick Styles is hoping for Mandy Rose, his favorite snow bunny, <laughs> to, <laughs> to transition into hardcore pornography. Uh, when she just make a million dollars off of that uh, fan time site or whatever in December, like, yeah, eventually maybe the interest wanes a little bit. What's she going to make? Only a couple hundred thousand a month? Like, shit, at this point, gosh, why would she want to have to do hardcore porn? Why would she want to have to do any wrestling at this point? Just keep doing your thing. It really doesn't matter. Honestly. So no, I don't think she will. As much as you might want her to. But honestly, haven't you seen enough of her body to where if you want to go hit the spank bank, you could do that? Do you really need any more? I mean, I don't know. At uh, Son Gosuaku uh, asks, how would you feel if WrestleMania 39's main event ends up being Stone Cold versus John Cena on night one and The Rock versus Roman Reigns on night two? I would say it does nothing for the company long term, really, but it's big names involved in the main events and then also John Cena. And some of you are going to say, how dare you say that about John Cena? His return to SmackDown resulted in the highest ratings for the show in two years. Yes. So let's talk about that. John Cena is such a big, massive star for WWE that he drove away millions of viewers. And when he comes back, after not having wrestled all year, with it actually being advertised a couple weeks ahead of time, he only brought with him a couple hundred thousand viewers. That just speaks to how little people truly care. 
That just speaks to how overrated as fuck John Cena has been and always will be. The only things worse than how overrated he is are his ever-enlarging bald spot in the back of his damn head and the volume with which he calls his spots in a ring. Um, but if those two were the main events, like the Cena-Austin dynamic, I don't get as much. Maybe it could work. But I like the thought of Stone Cold working somebody younger that's going to be able to do more bumping around for him. Uh, but maybe that would work. Um, Rock versus Roman works on so many different levels. At Mystic Plank, what would be your top two to three Mania matches of big star attractions like Rock, Austin, Cena, blah, blah, blah. All right, so if you do Rock and Roman, um, you know, I'll give you like Austin, Cena, sure, why not? Um, then you've probably got like, you didn't specify, so I'd say like Bad Bunny versus Logan Paul. Right? Like, that would certainly have a lot of star power to it. But you would say, well, why would you do that? To which I would respond with, why wouldn't you fucking do that? Look at most of the rest of the goddamn roster. At Dave G123 underscore 456, if you could book any five matches for this upcoming WrestleMania, what matches would it be? All right, motherfuckers. We started off with asking about the main events of night one and night two, and I don't even know that those end up being the main events, but... Um, then we got two to three top mini matches. And now Dave just gotta sit there and take it the extra mile by asking about the top five. <sighs> I don't know, because I haven't thought that much about it, frankly. Um, I am very heartbroken, disappointed that we can't get uh, John Cena versus Randy Orton in a title unification match where each of them have been 16-time champions and the winner becomes a 17-time champion. Like, this time it counts, like... Yeah, like, that's the dream match. But we've got WrestleMania 40. Maybe that can happen there. To which you would say, why would you want to see that one more time? To my response is, why wouldn't you want to see that one more time? Yeah, all those other times in the past, it fucking sucked. But this time, you've got two guys that really don't give a shit at this point. Like, Cena don't fucking care. Randy Orton don't fucking care. Man, that could actually make for some microphone gold. And yeah, I referred to John Cena, Randy Orton, and Microphone Gold in the same damn sentence. Now you're talking about Breakfast Club bullshit. You get Triple H involved as a guest referee. You say, well, what sense does that make? Again, it's Breakfast Club rules, bitches. It doesn't need to make sense for you. It just makes sense for them, damn it. Batista does a run-in. Why? Because he fucking can. Shawn Michaels comes in with his fucking one eye this way and his one eye that way, and he's super kicking everybody because he's fucking delusional. He thought he was booked in an NXT match in fucking Saudi Arabia. I don't know. Anyway, so where the fuck was I? Uh, Eagle Fan Sports. <laughs> Will Roman Reigns break Bruno's championship reign of 11 plus years holding the belt? No, he's not going to. At Jay Zalas 2031, Sammy Uso is red hot right now. Does WWE have to send him to try and get the titles off of Roman? I did a video a few days ago talking about how Cody Rhodes should not be the one to dethrone Roman Reigns. And I gave a couple of different reasons why, a couple of different options that I felt were better. I didn't say that Cody shouldn't be champion in 2023 because I think he should. But I don't think he should be the one to dethrone Roman. One of the options is Sami Zayn because of the story. You can debate whether or not he's the best option or not. From a pure star power standpoint, he absolutely isn't. That's The Rock, right? In terms of the future of the company, Sammy is also not the best option. You would put somebody like a Braun Breaker in that spot. But if you're talking about story and you want to have the best possible story, the best possible story that the fans could actually buy into is not Rock versus Roman. It's Sami Zayn versus Roman. So I think it's a consideration. I don't know that they go there, though. Sure doesn't feel like they're going to. Uh, at C Trotter 1197, who do you see going into the Hall of Fame this year? I don't know. That is a good question. I have not really thought about it. Um, at Biggest underscore Hedis, do you think that this mania is the right time for Reigns to drop at least one title, or should they wait another year to get some built up properly like Braun Breaker? Of course, that means they would have to build him up, right? That's that's true. Like that's a key point. Like they'd have to break him up, build him up, right? And he'd actually have to be ready for that spot and be proven that he could be worthy of that spot. Um. You know, to me, the longer they went with Roman, they almost created a Roman problem and a monster in the sense of you can't just have him drop the strap to anybody. And to 
to me, you should learn the lessons of having The Undertaker streak snapped by Brock Lesnar. That was really fucking stupid. There is no good defense for it. It was a fucking whim of Vince McMahon, and it was idiotic. Brock didn't need it. Brock didn't have to have it. It didn't pay off for Brock. It didn't pay off for WWE. And Taker came back and wrestled a few more times at Mania, so it didn't make any fucking sense for him. It was a fucking waste of time for everybody. Meanwhile, if you had waited a couple more years and had Roman be the one to beat him, and then that's when Roman becomes the top tribal chief, walks out the night after Romania, and says, "I'm acknowledge me. This is my yard now, bitches, and walks the fuck off. Like, there you go. You're off to the races. So learn from the mistakes of the past, is what I would say there. Um, you know, they might be getting an itch to get the belt off of him, but I don't have that itch just yet. At Connor Holt 16, how would you book Edge for WrestleMania? He would have a match, and I'd like to put him in a match where he could actually beat somebody. I'd have to think about who that would be and what the right type of stipulation, the right type of story is, but that's where I would lean right now. And then our feature question of the week comes from JJE261. Um, do you think Vince will come back to WWE in any form? And for you having the featured question of the week, I am going to follow you and encourage all of the viewers here to follow JJE261 on Twitter as well. Do I think Vince will come back to WWE in any form? Well, one, he's still vastly the majority shareholder. He doesn't own like 80% of WWE stock. So like as much as they talk about Vince resigned from WWE, there's always a yeah, but to me. There's a yeah, but at any point in time, he can fucking come back. He really can. He can figure out a way to get it done. He can figure out a way to maneuver it. Um, it's certainly a possibility. It's certainly a possibility that as majority shareholder, that he would overrule things involving the company to be petty out of spite. And you'd say, well, what about Stephanie and Triple H? And I would say, well, what the fuck about him? We're talking about Vince McMahon. This is a motherfucker back in 1999 at Over the Edge saw a guy fall like 70, 80 feet to his death in the ring and said, the show must go on. Vince is possible or able to do anything. You could certainly point to, like, would he be the headliner for the Hall of Fame this year? That's certainly possible. Um, or next year. Um, never say never in professional wrestling. With his age and the, the reason that he left, it makes it seem less likely. But Vince's fingerprints are still all over WWE. He still has the control at the end of the day with the percentage of shares that he holds. Um, so I absolutely would not rule 